This is Server Talk with Alexi and Mike, helping demystifying computing so you can make the best decisions in your business. Welcome to another exciting edition of Server Talk. Today's a very special edition because I'm not only here with Alexi, I'm here with Alexi and Emily from Intel. Hi there. So the reason that we have our special guest on today is because Intel announced it's the release of the new Haswell architecture. Now, I don't know too much about it, and that's why we invited Emily on to uh, discuss it a little further. Uh, so Emily, can you tell us what you do at Intel? Sure. I work in our data center group, and specifically I do marketing for our Intel Xeon processors that are put into our small business servers. Okay. So the Haswell architecture will fall right there. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So. The Haswell Microarchitecture is coming out uh, June 2nd. We announced the launch of it. There are three different versions. There's one for desktop and one for mobile, and then the version that I am going to talk about today, which is going to be used for servers, for entry server platforms and, and workstation platforms. Okay, sounds good. So what what is the significance of this new architecture? So it's a follow-on to our Ivy Bridge architecture. Um, so it's also on a 22 nanometer process, but it's going to be using a different socket. Um, and so the major changes or features of Haswell versus the previous generation is that we're going to be seeing more power savings and performance benefits, and we're also going to be seeing greater graphics uh, uh, processor technology. So there's an integrated uh, GPU graphics processor unit on the, on the Haswell technology, and it's going to be having twice the performance of the previous generation Ivy Bridge. So those are the big features uh, that will be updated with Haswell. So better performance, better performance per watt, and then better graphics performance. Okay. okay. What, what kind of servers do you think are best suited to take advantage? What, what are the purposes of, of these servers? So, you know, are we going to be looking at databases or, or what? What application well, it's, would this be? Sorry, it, it's interesting. There's a, a number of, of good applications for this new Haswell uh, Xeon processor technology. So the four main ones that we're thinking they can be used in are I mentioned small business servers, so entry server pedestals. Um, also, workstations, entry workstations. They can take advantage of the great integrated HD graphics performance. Then we have a couple new, kind of newer uh, technologies. So one of them would be uh, using them in uh, a media uh, server, so media or cloud gaming. Those, those are server graphics usages. You would have a rack of servers that would be used for streaming media or, or doing cloud-hosted gaming. Mm -hmm. Another one would be for microservers. And so when we say microserver, we don't mean a little server. What we mean is a number of small, um, lightweight nodes, so that then massed in a larger server unit. So you could have a server that has, say, 80 nodes, and each node would have its own processor in it, and that would be a microserver. And so it's that those are really used for a lot of web hosting uh, applications. So if you are a web hoster, you need to deliver up a lot of content. It's not a lot, it doesn't require a lot of processing power, but it requires a lot of redundancy. So a microserver would be great for that. And with this new Haswell Xeon, we have the lowest power Xeon ever. So it goes down to 13 watts. So that's great if you have a lot of processing to do and you want to save on your power consumption. So great for those data center usages. Uh -huh. But I'd say for the most of your listeners, they're going to be seeing this Haswell Intel Xeon processor uh, E3, V3, in the servers for small business and for the workstations. I got you. So how, how does the power consumption compare against the old model? You mentioned it's uh, 13 watts. Yes, that's the lowest power. We probably you probably won't be seeing a 13 watt processor in a in a small business server or workstation. Uh, you know, we are concerned about power consumption in Intel, but more in the database usage. So, if let's say you have a server in your office and you just have one server, I mean, you don't care that much about the power consumption. What are you saving five bucks a year? But you are seeing better performance per watt overall. So that is a benefit. But I think it's a benefit that the data center usages will see more than say if you just have one server or one workstation in your. You mentioned that there's a a significant improvement in the graphics. Uh, can you talk about? Can you expound on that a little bit more? Sure. So Intel HD Graphics is the brand name of this uh, integrated graphics processors that we build into our computer processors. Um, so the previous generation Ivy Bridge uh, had HD Graphics 4000, which had 16 execution units. This next generation Haswell is coming out with Intel HD Graphics 4600, which has 20 execution units. So that's a, definitely an improvement in the performance of the graphics. 
When we say we have graphics on our CPUs, you know, we are comparing them performance-wise to, say, an entry-level external graphics card or a discrete graphics card, and we're seeing very similar performance. So if you are a price-sensitive workstation user, for example, you wouldn't have to spend the extra $150 to $200 to buy an external graphics card. You could rely on the integrated HD graphics in your Intel Xeon Haswell CPU and get um, comparable performance. So it's definitely a benefit to the entry workstation market. So, Emily, one thing that we're seeing a lot of days is in workstations, users want more than one monitor. And traditionally on, on motherboards, you would have a limited number of monitor support. With this more horsepower graphic card processor, do we see more monitor support? You are absolutely right, we do. We see uh, support for up to three displays. So that's something you're right, absolutely right that the workstation users need to use, and we're uh, basically building the capability to support up to three displays. Okay. And so um, what about, uh, does the memory still, the, the memory for the graphics card, is that used as part of the system memory? Exactly. It relies on the system memory. Uh, so for the E3 V3 Haswell, it would support up to 32 gigabytes of memory capacity. There are two channels of memory, and um, it would support either DDR3 uh, 1600 or 1333 memory. It will also now support the low, low voltage memory, which is DDR3L 1600, if you are concerned about the power usage of that. Okay. So I, I see a few, few trends in, in, in Haswell. Um, one of them is, is that low power consumption targeted at data centers, um, again, specifically in that micro, uh, micro server architecture where you have a lot of nodes in, in a small space. Um, and, and we covered uh, power consumption a little bit in a, in a previous podcast. And then, so uh, heavy uh, power consumption users, just to, to lower the power consumption, and uh, improve graphics for, for workstations so you don't need additional, additional cards. Um, and you can see a lot of performance just straight off from the processor. Absolutely right. Uh, those are all very good. You summed that up great. Um, I'd also want to highlight a couple things for our small business customers. Um, so features that we have had and will continue to have on Haswell uh, Xeon. One is the support for, for ECC or error correcting code memory. And so error correcting code memory is a little bit um, uh, more, it's, it's more advanced than the standard memory that you would get on your desktop or your laptop system. Um, what it can do is basically if there is a memory error that occurs, it will automatically correct that memory error and keep your system running. So if you've ever had a laptop have what uh, they call a blue screen of death, that's often due to a memory error. And if you are running your data on a server or you're using a workstation, you know, you would know that if you have a blue screen of death and you haven't saved your work or if it's a server and uh, you're running your whole business off that server, you don't want your system to shut down. And so having error correcting code memory support on those platforms is really, really useful uh, for those usages. Okay. Now, um, is ECC on the server and workstation uh, based or is it on all Haswell? It's uh, supported by the Haswell Xeon platforms, and so not on the uh, desktop or the mobile laptop. Okay. All right, so Emily, what is the lifespan of this new architecture, and where do you see it going? Where, where do you think Intel is going to take it further? Uh, well, I, I, I can't predict too much into the future. Um, you know, I think we're going to continue to focus um, in future generations on, you know, still continuing to lower that, that power consumption and also um, improve our graphics technologies. Another thing I wanted to mention for Haswell is that we have some new security features uh, that are technologies, hardware-based security technologies that are built into the processor. Mm -hmm. And what would those security features be used for? So they're basically designed to help protect platforms or systems from being uh, changed without authorization. So one of them is kind of to designed to protect the system BIOS, and another one is designed to protect the system operating system. And they're both known as Intel Platform Protection Technology. And so under that Intel Platform Protection Technology, we have something called BIOS Guard. Let me say this again, because we have the train going off in the background. <laughs> so with the new Haswell, we have some new integrated hardware security features. They are bucketed under something called Intel Platform Protection Technology. This includes BIOS Guard, which helps protect the BIOS from being changed without authorization and protects it during BIOS updates. We also have OS Guard, which protects the operating system for attacks. And so both of these are hardware-based built-in security technologies that would be included with Haswell. 
We also have a couple data protection technologies. One of them is called SecureKey. What it does is provide uh, random numbers. It's a hardware-based random number generator. A lot of security applications will use uh, random number generators to uh, validate their uh, applications. And so this is a hardware-based random number generator that is uh, super secure. Uh, we also have um, support for ASNI, which is the uh, encryption standard. Um, it uses a hardware to accelerate data encryption and decryption. It's great if you're using a SSD, for example, and you want to speed up your the amount of time it would take to encrypt your data on your hard drive. Okay, now would uh, users use all of these in a server or workstation, or is it a mixture? Like, I, I feel in, encryption on drives can be used in, in, in workstations in case someone pulls it out. Can it be used in, in a server environment as well? It can be. I think you're correct in that there's more of a risk of someone removing the drive if it's a workstation versus a server. I think that's probably true. And a lot of server server platforms, server chassis will actually have features like a physical lock on the drive bay so that you can't remove the drive. Um, but it, it's, it's a great feature to have if you do want to end up secure, you know, um, securing your data using encryption. Okay. All right. Um, now, uh, in terms of performance, uh, just just raw performance of the processor compared to the the previous uh, generation Ivy Bridge, what would you say the the per, like a percentage uh, increase would be versus Ivy Haswell versus Ivy Bridge? Sure. You know, one thing I, I would also say about performance is that you know we do compare generation to generation, but a lot of times when people are making a purchasing decision, they're not on a a year refresh cycle. So. You know, they're maybe looking at a two or three year old system that they want to upgrade. So we also like to look at the performance data that way too. But for servers, we're seeing eighteen percent around eighteen percent generation to generation performance improvement. Okay. And then if we're looking at versus two years old, we're looking at uh, about forty percent generation to generation and um, energy efficient performance, I should say. Okay. So so we're definitely seeing a lot more performance in the same uh, skew or the same bin level, right? Certainly, certainly. We're definitely seeing more performance, uh, better energy efficient performance, better graphics performance, and at, at, at similar price points to the, the existing generation. So, um, you know, really making it easy for our customers to upgrade. Okay. Now, um, I know the skewing and, and how, uh, how, the, how the skewing for Haswell and uh, Ivy Bridge works. For our listeners, can you kind of tell us um, if they're choosing a processor, what's what are the different uh, characters in, in the part number and kind of what do they mean? Great question. Well, we definitely don't make it easy to understand things like that at Intel. Uh, but for the 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 E three twelve hundred V three, that's the official name of the the Haswell processor uh, Xeon processor family. So we have four. Um, I'm sorry, five, five uh, SKUs that are designated as server SKUs, the E3 1280, V3 1270, V3 1240, V3 1230, V3, and 1220, V3. Um, so those are five of the SKUs in the family that we've said are for, for server use. We have three, uh, three workstation SKUs, the 1275 V3, 1245 V3, and 1225 V3. Um, those all have the integrated graphics on them. So the server SKUs do not have the integrated graphics. The workstation SKUs do. And the way you can tell is if it ends in a 5, it has graphics. Okay. And so the previous generation was V2, and so this one's going to be V3, right? Correct, yes. So it's easy for users to identify, hey, if we're using a 1230 V3, uh, V2, we just have to go to 1230 V3 to get more performance for roughly the same price range. Absolutely, yes. Okay. You guys took it off the deep end there with the technical stuff. So one thing I'd like to, to maybe bring it back from the technical side of things, you know, one thing we see a lot is a trend about um, cloud services. And I think the cloud is a big buzzword right now. Um, and people are thinking that everyone's going to just go to the cloud. And maybe we don't need to have a server in your office anymore. And so, you know, we've looked at that. And, and we kind of come to the conclusion that, you know, the, the cloud is great and a lot of Small businesses, for example, are already using the cloud. They may not even realize it. They may be using Gmail or Office you know, 360. They're doing their hosted uh, email in the cloud. But we, we still really see a strong value proposition for having a server on-premise. So, you know, for example, let's say you, had, um, you wanted to store four terabytes of data. And if you wanted to just store it in the cloud using a, you know, let's say you want to use the Amazon cloud service, it would cost you $400 a month to store four terabytes of data in the cloud. However, you could spend $1,200 and you could get a server 
with four terabytes of storage, um, and that you could have at your office, and you know that would be a, a expense you could write off, and you can access that any time. And so you, in three months, you basically it would pay for itself. Um, and certainly, depending on where you're located, there are benefits to having your your data hosted locally versus backed up in the cloud. Um, you know, I'm sure everyone has had their internet go out every once in a while, and you know, if your whole business is in the cloud and you don't have access to it, that can be pretty frustrating. So just something to think about as you're looking, if you're a small business customer and you're looking at your IT infrastructure and you're thinking, how do I want to do this? Um, do I want to do everything in the cloud? Maybe you're not ready for that yet. Maybe you want to put some things in the cloud, but you also want to have uh, a server on site to host your data and to back it up. Um, we think that's a great option. Gotcha. So one of the questions, um, we see a lot of things, a lot of times come up is what's the, the cost of ownership of, of this new technology versus the older technology? Um, so where does Intel see the cost of ownership for, for Haswell? Well, I, I think it's not just in isolation, right? You're, you're going to be buying a platform that has Haswell on it. Um, you know, I think that we're seeing a, you know, around a three- to four-year uh, lifespan for your server. Uh, you know, I think the, one of the benefits of, of purchasing a ZM-based server is that the platforms often have a lot of capability to expand. So, you know, you can add hard drives and memory down the road as your business grows. Um, so, you know, they, and they tend to be priced affordably. So, you know, maybe not too much more than a high-end desktop. You could buy an Intel Xeon-based server onto your workstation in Haswell, and then you can have the flexibility to add memory, add storage as you go. Okay. I, I think uh, I, I kind of, the question was meant in a little bit of a different way. Um, so say, for example, in your data center, you have uh, five nodes and they're consuming maybe 70 watts per node. And then with this new technology, they're going to consume less power. Uh, um, yeah. Well, you have to spend money up front to, to, to purchase the system. What would be, roughly, how long would you expect it to get paid off? Um, I'm st I don't really have that kind of calculation <laughs> off the top of my head in terms of a break even on that. I'm all sorry. Right. Sounds good. Yeah, well, usually, <laughs> usually you guys have all these like little charts that say, hey, you know, in, in six to seven months. But all right, yeah. I, I we do and some plot not so much for this one. I do that more for E5 where they do the TCO. I haven't seen the TCO breakout for this one really. Yeah, uh, in E5, definitely. That's that's kind of the one that I, I see in my head. Yeah, we're going to publish a blog post uh, that goes along with this podcast, so if that information becomes available to us, then we could represent it graphically in, 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 the, pod, in the blog post itself. Sure. And we thank you so much for your time. Uh, we really appreciate you coming out today and introducing Haswell. You're very welcome. I hope this was useful for your listeners. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Take it easy. All right, bye-bye. Right, this has been Server Talk with Alexi and Mike. For more information on anything related to servers, please visit www.icc-usa.com.